Hello everyone, welcome back to Lavin's 2 for one last video for today. Uh, this time we're going to be going over Cherno, Small Fairy of the Ice. So, um, give me a second. I just noticed that I have her as a Hexer, which is uh, not what I wanted because I want her to have... Yeah, I wanted to have all base everything as much as I can. Um, so that you can talk about how she's going to look in her basic form, and then you can upgrade from there. So, Cherno's base, actual base stats are base 96 HP, base 104 attack, base 80 defense, base 102 magic and speed, and base 64 mind. At level 1, you're going to have 77 HP, 15 MP, 56 attack, 44 defense, 55 magic, 36 mind, 103 speed, 36 evasion, um, 16 TP, 18 health recovery, and 3 MP recovery. Also, her base stats are 24 paralysis and poison, 0 shock tear and death, 48 heavy, 64 silence, and 12 debuff. And then, looking at her elemental affinities, she has 24 fire, 240 cold, 124 to wind, mystic, and spirit, 100 to nature, and 76 to dark and physical. So overall, she has some of, if not the worst, stats in the game. Again, we're looking at Team 9 members here. Team 9 members are not exactly known to be anything but jokes. But is Cherno really a joke? Well, let's find out. So, um, you do notice that she has some of the highest evasion in the game, though, so that kind of makes up for it, but we'll look at some of her other abilities. First, let's start with the active ones. Icicle Fall. A single target cold spell that costs 3 MP. It uh, takes 128% of both your attack and your magic. Um, 128% of your attack and magic combined first. So, damage formula is attack, 100% of your attack plus 100% of your magic, that times 128%. And then it's subtracted from 100, uh, from, subtracted from 80% of your opponent's defense. So, uh, it also has a special effect of lowering the speed by 44% with a debuff rate of base 88, but at level 5, then you get base 112, which is incredible, which is one of the highest debuff rates in the game. It's just pretty good. Um, and it's a delay of 53. So really bad damage, but really good debuff. This debuff does not increase with um, level. Diamond Blizzard. It costs 6 MP, it's all enemies with the cold element, and hits with the damage formula of 124% of your attack minus 56% of your opponent's defense. Um, it has a paralyzation rate, a uh, paralyzation effect of 6,000, um, with a 38% delay, and the rate is, is base 85, but at level 5, it gets you a base 105% paralyzation rate. Last, uh, next up we have Perfect Freeze, 5 MP, hits all enemies with cold spell again, cold element again, it takes, again, with the attack plus magic, and then multiplies it times 30, uh, 96%, the lowest in the game so far that we've seen. Um, but it is a composite, so that is expected. And takes away from 60% of your opponent's defense. Uh, as well as it has a 32% uh, speed debuff on it with 46 delay, and the debuff rate is 75 base, but 95 if fully upgraded. Lastly, White Album. It's a self-buff spell, which increases your defense and mind by 50% each. Well, uh, but it has a 70% delay, and skill level does not do anything. There's no impact for skill level. So, don't bother leveling this up. So, overall, we have some good debuff rates and good paralysis rates, but overall very bad damage. Combined with her attacking stat of 104 and magic stat of 102, she's going to be rather meh in terms of damage. For a passive, she has TP, which is, again, one of the worst ones that you want. Speed, which isn't that bad, and Affinity, which we'll, we'll talk about later. Um, motivate, hard, and hands-on experience, of course. Team 9, which we talked about last time, increases, skill, increases your stats by skill level times 8 um, per person. So this could be 16 per person. So that could be 16, 32, 48 if you have all three of them on the front line. All four of them on the front line. Because you have to be on the front line yourself to get the boost. And then the other three minutes of the front line would be the other ones. So, not bad. As we mentioned, Rumia is S tier. 
Rising after falling, the amount of TP lost after battle is greatly reduced, and after dying is also greatly reduced. Again, TP is not an in-battle effect uh, that we care about, so that is completely useless. Finally, user's turn, all enemies will have the speed reduced by skill level times 4. Uh, this debuff is unblockable. Even if they have a million, million, trillion debuff resist, this debuff will still hit. This is not base, this is a debuff. So you can have an 8% debuff automatically upon your turn. Um, speeds up recovery from debuffs and ailments. Not bad since she has absolutely the worst debuff and ailment resistances in the game. And then ability of mitigated ice. On the, when you use the front line, cold damage taken is reduced. This effect is applied to all frontliners. So, what does Cherno do good? Let's talk about that first. Let's talk about the positives. Cherno has the highest cold resist in the game, making up for some of her lackluster elemental resist. Um, and, um, well, nothing too good about her stats, nor her um, status resistances. Her HP recovery is actually not bad. Um, she has the second highest leveling rate in the game, though her library costs are rather expensive. Her HP recovery rate's good. And, well, I mean, her defenses aren't the worst. Um, AD defense is actually not the worst. It's, um, okay. Along with, um, a decent evasion stat of 36 means that with, um, the White Album, you can actually get some decent tanking against, um, against cold element users. Which is quite nice, because... Even though you're, you're not going to deal damage against cold element uses, you aren't dealing damage anyways, because you, you suck at dealing damage. Just trust me, Cheno does no damage. Like, they, those, none of her moves, besides Diamond Blizzard, are really any good at dealing damage. And even that one is only situational, and not helped out by the fact that it's only but from her attack, it's not composite, and her attack set is really underwhelming. Even worse than Kogasa. Who I, uh, who I, like, mocked for having a bad attack stat. Um, so yeah, you're not going to be getting a lot of damage out of her. However, even against cold, uh, even against things that resist cold, you can still get off your paralysis with a decent effect and decent, well, okay effect and decent infliction rate, as well as a lot of speed debuffs. So, she, that's about what it looks like. She's a quite a bulky, supportive unit. I mean, it wouldn't be bad, except for she only has one passive ability, reduce cold damage taken. So not only, yeah, all the other ones are like really fairly bad, but Love Tom Boyish Girl is not too bad, I guess. And Team 9 isn't that bad either. It gives you a bit more bulkiness. But yeah, no matter what you do, I can't get Cherno to deal damage. I've tried, trust me, I've tried. Cherno just doesn't do it. So all you can really do is debuff with speed, put paralysis on and take a hit or two. Problem is, is that tanking a hit or two really doesn't do much since all her stuff relies on buffs, not increasing her base stats, meaning you're not going to be working too well with other buffers, and like, uh, since you're probably going to be having, um, Reimu or Kaine on your team anyways, buffing up, then you just don't synergize well with pretty much most teams, and so you're going to be, uh, just probably better to have any other character and just do an AoE defense buff than have Chen to do her own self buff. Not to mention, we're going to find out real quick that there's better speed debuffers. Yep, as good as her infliction rate is for speed, and as good as some of the 40, nice 44% speed is, one that's against one enemy, so which isn't that bad, but it just, we can find better ways to um, inflict that much since debuffs only come out to um, a maximum of negative 50, then we will find out that you can pretty much get similar reductions with other characters and do other stuff like damage and actually have tankiness that is good. Like just overall have good stats. So overall, Cherno has a very, very niche role similar to... Um, Similar to Marissa, she has, I think her and Marissa are probably the most similar in that they have a very niche role, and Kogasa. The only problem is that Cherno's role is not unique. Both Marissa and 
uh, Kogasa fill in very niche roles, but they're very unique niches that no other character has, whereas Cheno is outclassed by several characters. But maybe subclasses will do something. Let's look at them. Guardian is okay, since you want to be tanky, it does increase your base tankiness. However, again, you're investing a lot into Cherno, um, and you're only getting something out of it that's outclassed by a lot of other things. Um, Monk isn't too bad, but, like, she doesn't get as much benefits from it as some other characters, and just overall this class, the subclass doesn't really give too much. It just gives minor stuff, and Cherno really could benefit from a lot more than just a couple minor tweaks. They don't... That isn't going to put her ahead of any other character. Uh, Warrior, not bad. It allows her, um, Diamond Blizzard to do a lot of floor clearing. It makes it so she can actually deal a little bit of damage, but still not enough. Sorcerer does increase the damage a little bit, but still not enough to make a difference. She has no natural healing, only one na natural buff on herself, which can't even be... Which doesn't really even need to be increased. Um, she, her Hexer is probably... We'll talk about Hexer uh, in Toxologist in a minute. MP recovery is not bad. So she does have, I forgot to mention... Did I mention? She has base 15 MP and gains it 1 MP every 19 levels. She's not the worst at this. Um, it gives her something to do as a supportive unit other than just free, slow and paralyzed. But the problem is she's mostly so busy with that she can't... Um, really spend the time to give up your MP. Which is why she's also not that great as a herbalist, because she's spending more time debuffing the enemy than she is going to... so she doesn't have much time to um, buff your own enemies, uh, own characters. Stratus isn't bad on her. If you're going to take the uh, bulky Cherno route, then this allows you to p provide a bit more support along with your cold damage mitigation. You can add a little bit more mitigation. It won't be buffing up your damage too much, but you'll buff up your uh, other allies' damage, which is what most mostly strategists are going for. Most strategists are not going for their own damage up. They're mostly going for their defense up. Gambler, again, is you can try and deal damage with her, but you're going to feel that her damage is still subpar compared to most other characters. Diva is Diva. Um, Transcendent is actually not too bad. It increases your tankiness. Um, just like the other stuff does, and also gives you a little bit of damage up, but then again, you're still going to be hitting for very low damage numbers compared to any actual damage deal in the game. So let's look at the two I skipped over. First is Hexer, and this one is interesting. So, um, debuff resistances are stri slightly increased, and speed is the big thing you want to get out of this. MP and speed, this allows you to stay out and start getting off a lot of slows. When you use this uh, debuff spell on the enemies, debuff effect will be increased by this. Sadly, this is, um, the her attacks have debuffs on them. I don't know if they synergize with it. Even if they do, the problem is debuffs max out at 50. And so this is not very great because you just hit them with a minus 44 and it's actually only plus 6. That's right. You don't even get any use out of putting a second point into this, second level into this, because you're already maxed out um, on the debuffs. So, any DLC and allies will have the effects reduced, not bad, because you can um, use this to protect the opponents from debuffs, again, sort of using it as a totem. Uh, if the use is affected by a debuff, you're not going to be afflicting debuffs on yourself. Uh, no, and then Toxiologist. So, ailment resistance is a slightly increased, which is good, because she has some of the worst in the game. Uh, HP and MP are not bad. So, the chance of inflicting ailment will increase by quite a bit. Um, the problem is, is that it's more of the um, effect, being 6,000 paralyzation effect, that's more lackluster than her infliction rate. Um, so, you can have, you can do the same totem thing, and if you're afflicted by an ailment, which is going to be very likely, you can recover HP and MP. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Um, but overall, there's, there's still nothing that fits so perfectly. You'll find that, especially later on, like, let, every character that we mentioned so far has not, with the exception of Yomu and Guardian, has not have a specified, this is their best, this is like a perfect fit subclass. But later on, we'll be seeing a lot more characters that have really good subclasses to go with them, and that'll increase the value of the character. That's why Cherno loses a bit of value because she has no amazing subclass with her. 
Rumia gains value though because she has multiple subclasses that are amazing with her. Being Strategist, Gambler, uh, Strategist, Gambler, Magician, um, well not Magician, sorry, Sorcerer. I have her as Magician, but that's because of uh, a late game cheese strat where you can infinite people. We'll, we'll get to that much later. Anyways, overall, I think it's time for the final rating. We've gone over all the base stuff of Cherno, all of what Cherno can do, some strategies of Cherno, what subclasses. So time for a rating. As a reminder, we have S, C, F, Borderline 1, Borderline 3, Borderline 2, um, C tier, and then S tier. So what does Cherno get? Drum roll please. And E tier. So, I, did, I was thinking, uh, she sh really should be D tier, um, cause the thing is is that I didn't really plan for D and E to exist, but, uh, and so, I technically she could be like borderline 4, cause there's like a gap between like a C and an F, and then she's sort of in that gap. Rinosuke's an F because he's just like unusably bad in all senses of the word, which Cherno has a use, but unlike C tiers, she's... Her use is better filled by other things, like she fills a niche that's much better filled by other characters in the game that can not only fill that niche, but can actually do useful stuff and that niche at the same time. So she just does one thing really good, whereas a lot of other characters can do like a bunch of things, which include that one thing just as good as she can. So that's why she's really bad. She has some use, so she's better than Rinosuke. But overall, she's pretty darn bad. Now, I could still see Cherno working. There's still a couple fights in which I tend to use Cherno. And like I mentioned, the, uh, that cold uh, damage reduction is never bad. But overall, Cherno just... Cherno's just Cherno. Anyways, maybe next time in the lap of the Toho 3, if that ever exists. But for the next time on this series, we're going to be going over... Minoriko Aki. Until then, see ya.